Hey everybody, it's Matt Donner, Chief Academic Officer at Pyramind, and today I'm going to be doing a few videos on multiband compression, in particular the multipressor in Logic Pro. This is for my buddy Reese over at Pyramind Online, who sent me a session and said, help, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know how to deal with this, and uh, I'll show you later what he did with the multipressor in his session, uh, a couple of things interesting going on there. Um, but before we get to what he did in his session and how he can use it in his scenario, I thought it would be good to start with just a simple welcome to multiband compression, this time in particular in Logic using their built-in multipressor. I don't know how many of you out there know what the multipressor is or think you know how it is or think you know what it works uh, and all of those good things, but um, I, I figured I'd start at the top and work my way down to the bottom. I'm not going to show you every single parameter here because a lot of it's just review of the general parameters of compression, but what I did think would be good would be an overall sort of a top view of what multiband compression really is. And effectively, it's just a compressor, okay? It's not an EQ, it's not a built-in mastering tool, although people do use it for kind of a poor man's mastering, and that's what we're going to do today. I'm just going to show you with a piece of music what it can do to really help put a nice sheen and polish over things. It's kind of like an EQ and compressor together, but really what a multiband compressor is, is it's a frequency range dependent compressor. That means that in this particular case, there are four compressors. You can see number one, number two, number three, and number four. If I turn them all off, nothing's happening. Each of these compressors is based on a particular frequency range. So if we look at number one, for example, I'll turn two, three, and four off. This is a single band. Right now, you see its range is from 20 cycles to 20,000 cycles. That's not very useful. That's pretty much a standard compressor. Things get interesting when you turn on another band. Now, you can see what happened here is immediately this tool got broken into two different slots. Slot number one is a compressor for this frequency range. In this case, it's frequencies from 20 hertz all the way up to 64 cycles. So let me zoom in here. You can see here at the crossover point, these are the frequencies that define which range of tones gets compressed by a number one and which range of tones get compressed by a compressor number two. Now, number two is on, and two at the moment goes from 64 all the way up to 20K. If we turn on number three, you can bet that it's going to go from 64. In this case, you'll see up to here to 460. Now, watch what happens when I turn it on. Immediately at 460 hertz, this other dividing line happens. You can see as soon as you hover over the line, you get these arrows. That means you can click on it and you can drag it around. So you can really adjust what frequency you'd like to cross over. And that's literally crossing over between band two and band three. If I turn on number four, you'll see it's going to do the same thing at 3.3K. Sure enough. So that's multiband compression. Now, as you can see, if I zoom down to the bottom here, this particular one is a compressor and an expander. I'm not going to be using the expander function right now. We're just going to be looking at the compressor function. And in typical compressor fashion, there are five parameters more important than others. This may be review for some of you, and that's fine. Compression threshold, which is the volume at which the compression starts. The ratio, which is how much. Uh, down here, attack is how fast it turns on. Release is how fast it turns off. And then really, really important one up here is the gain makeup. As you take certain tone, tones or, or volume frequency ranges out of the volume curve by compressing them, you can add some of that back in here. And that's pretty much what we're going to do here today. So I have this particular track. This is a, um, a finished piece of work from uh, one of our graduates uh, of the program. And he and his writing partner wrote this uh, really, really cool and sexy tune. And uh, I'm going to sort of borrow it for the time being to just kind of show what a quick and dirty mastering job the multipressor can do. This is really helpful if you have to real fast just kind of smack something in, smack something out, shape it up a little bit, and send it off to a client. There are, there are other uses for the multiband compression, but this is, this is one of them. So first things first, I'm going to let the tune play for a little bit so we can hear what's going on. And then I'll show you my process in terms of going through the multipressor and kind of setting it how I like it. Then, in the next part, we'll move over to uh, take a look at what Reese did in his session, show you how he used it, and show you uh, maybe a different way to use it. First off, you loved me, then you had enough of me. Just like that going again, away from my bed. I'm gonna keep loving you, so sad, but yes, it's true. I can't let the picture go that's stuck in my head. 
big fan of this too. It's really cool, pretty funky in kind of a uh, new Prince sort of way. Uh, but I want you to pay close attention to the, the low bouncy bass and the vocal quality. Uh, there's not too much going on in terms of uh, instrumentation. There's a lot going on in terms of rhythm and sound. Uh, the bass is real warm and bubbly and bounces along. The vocals are nice and mid-rangey. Uh, there's a lot of top end going on on the top synths, plus that, that uh, the noise washes in there. Let's take one more listen and pay now attention to the bass, the vocal, and then the high end. Trying to lift. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this back to the beginning, and we've been listening the whole time with the multipressor on, or at least it's been inserted. You can see it's inserted here. It is bypassed, so it's not actually doing anything right now. First thing I'm going to do is unbypass it. Uh, just so it can start working. I, I happen to have my finished settings here, and I'll go through one at a time and show you how I got there. Uh, one of the really cool things about multi-band compression, the multi-presser in particular, is that you can listen channel by channel, strip by strip, band by band. Um, and then you can kind of A, B to see what you like or don't like about your settings. So we'll start by soloing band number one. We're just going to be listening to 20 to 64 hertz and see what's going on in the piece. Yeah, and I'll bypass it. Uh, and then you can hear before and after. Honestly, there's not a lot going on here. I have zero in the makeup game. The threshold's at neg 12 and the ratio is at three, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's a lot of compression going on. So I'll give you before and after while it plays. Okay, so I'm not sure what you heard or didn't hear. I really suggest listening with big monitors with a subwoofer or a nice pair of low frequency sensitive headphones so you can really hear the difference. But uh, basically, this is a typical compressor setting. It's basically saying that any volume between 20 hertz and 64 hertz that's over neg 12 is going to get compressed down to a third of its original volume. It's going to turn on in 2 milliseconds. It's going to turn off in 49 milliseconds. Uh, so it's going to turn on fast and let go pretty slow, which means when the compressor kicks, it kicks in pretty quick and then it holds on to it for a little while. Uh, what I heard in there is that some of the low end was, when it was bypassed, it blooms out a little bit. It, it's nice and big and it comes right up into your face. And when the compressor's on, the low end pushes back a little bit. It basically removes a little bit of the low end in terms of volume without actually removing the low end. So it's a nice way to control the volume of the bass without actually having to EQ it out. Uh, one of the things I was listening for in this piece is that I really like the bass, but it started to take away from some of the power and the mid-range and the vocal clarity and some of the high end. So I didn't want to kill the low end. I didn't want to filter it out or use a shelf or use an EQ, but I did want to kind of control it. So that's it. You solo the band, and then you work your settings until you get what you like, bypass it to hear before and after, and then move on to the next band. Now, it should be noted that when you listen zoomed in like this, band by band by band, you might love what you're getting in that band, and then when you un-bypass the whole thing or unsolo the whole thing, it might not work. So you might have to make adjustments band by band by band. So first control the volume band by band by band, and then you can work on the makeup gain. Or if you want to control the volume and work the makeup gain at the same time, cool. When you unsolo and take a look at all four, it might be a good idea then to go in and make some adjustments so that the overall balance is really good. So here's the low mids. You can see it's a different setting. Uh, threshold's at neg nine, and at least neg, neg nine and a half. So uh, a little less of the volume coming into it is going to get compressed. This is between 64 and 460. Uh, again, the attack is pretty fast, and the release is real slow. So you can see I really want to kind of get a hold of this. And I'm adding 2 dB after the fact. Let's start bypassed, and then I'll activate it while we have playback. First off, you love me, then you had enough of me. Just like that going again away from my bed. I'm gonna keep loving you. So savvy, yes, it's true. I can't let the picture go that's stuck in my head. Trying to let you go as hard as a mother. 
to stop it there because he swears a little bit. So I don't know what you heard, but what I heard is that the low mids get much more powerful, not just louder, because 2 dB is not that much volume, but they get a lot more powerful. They get tighter and they push more aggressively. You'll hear more of the low mids more often and just a little bit louder. Uh, what it bypassed, it sounded nice, but kind of flat. And as soon as we activated the compressor here, all of a sudden the low mids came really up and up in front and in your face. Now keep in mind, it goes all the way down to 64. That's a lot of low end. I mean, that's not, you know, rumble the, the building apart 25 cycles, but 64 is pretty low. A lot of six inch speakers really can't go down that low to begin with. So there's a lot of bass in this low, low mid uh, band right here. Uh, one of the things that I like to do in sort of uh, quick mastering jobs, and even in, in, in special mastering jobs, is I like to actually remove some of the super sub frequencies and boost them in overtones, uh, second, third, fourth harmonic of, this, of the overall sound, because I think you'll get a lot more power and a lot more bang for your buck. A lot of speakers simply can't reproduce these tones down here, and they're just stealing energy from your overall loudness. So I like to tame this a little bit and add a lot of energy here um, just to make sure that it sounds big and bassy and warm without actually being big and bassy. So that's the band two. We'll move on to band three here. Now band three, there's a lot of vocal, there's a lot of um, synth work going on in here, the snares in here, uh, there's the top, top end of the bass spectrum. Uh, and also, you can see I'm crossing over at 3.3K. This is a particular frequency that I'm just not a big fan of. Uh, and so whenever I put the crossover at 3.3, I like that because it tends to help me control that one particular frequency. What I'm gonna do here is I want the mid range to be strong and powerful, but really, really tight. So I lowered the threshold down even further than the first one at neg 15. The ratio is up to five and a half and above, really 5.7. So whatever's coming in is getting cut down to uh, one fifth of its normal volume. Again, the attack's pretty fast, the release is pretty slow, and uh, we'll start with the bypass, and here's the mid range as it normally is. First off, you loved me, then you had enough of me Just like that going again, away from my bed I'ma keep loving you, so savvy, yes it's true I can't let the picture go, that's stuck in my head Trying to let you go, as hard as... Okay, thanks for that. Uh, last band, again, you can hear in the mid-range what's going on is the, uh, the vocals get really strong and really clear. And then in band number four, we'll real quick do the same thing, and then I'll hear, show you the whole thing. And then we'll move on to Reese's session. So here is the high end. Ah, there goes this way. Oh, well. First off, you loved me. Then you had enough of me. Just like that going again, away from my bed. So same thing here, uh, one of the reasons why I think this is really, really valuable is it brings up the hi-hat and the sizzle on the voice. Um, that kind of high frequency makes things sound really bright and uh, sharp and powerful and helps with intelligibility. So I'm going to zoom out now and not solo, not bypass, I'm going to bypass the whole uh, multipressor and then you can kind of hear before and after. Try. Here's before. Again, sounds good. Um, now what I'm going to do is go back and hit play and halfway through the intro I'll activate the multipressor and the same thing with the verse. When the verse comes on I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it on halfway through so you can really hear the difference between the two. So here we go. So if you heard what I heard, the overall song didn't really get louder. It's just that bits and pieces of it got louder. The high got sharper, the mids got sharper, the lows got uh, warmer, but the bass thinned out a little bit. And I guess 
the point is that when you put this out um, to the to the to the world, no matter what system this is going to get played back on, it should sound crisp, bright, and warm without actually stealing energy from the low end. So that's multi-pression in a nutshell. Now uh, we'll go over to see what Reese did in his session um, and see what maybe he could have done a little differently. All right, stay tuned. <laughs> 